if you're trying to figure out if your body's responding well to a carnivore diet or even a keto diet or even a low carb high fat diet use a blood glucometer in this video i'm going to go over the numbers what to look for signs symptoms benefits problems right now Look at this chart. Now, this is my favorite chart. It really gives you a clear visual of, it's got your HbA1c. Your HbA1c is a snapshot of your hemoglobin cells in about two to three months. Then you have, which is measured in millimoles. Then you have your milligrams per deciliter, typically the American way to measure your fasted glucose or rather finger prick test. And that's what your milligrams per deciliter can look like in the US. Or you can do the millimoles in that metric for your fasted or two hours after a meal or any time of the day, but not an HB hemoglobin A1C. I'm going to blow this up a little bit so we can see the numbers more clearly and go through it. Okay, here we go. As you can see to the left of the screen, it says HbA1c, MgDl, and MmOl, which is the milligrams per deciliter and the millimoles. Now the millimoles with the HbA1c measured are different than your fasted millimoles. So I know it can get kind of confusing, but let's go through. Now here on this chart, it says that green is go. Like it's great. Green is great. And if you have, we'll start talking about your HbA1c. If you have a 4.0, that's too low. I wouldn't make that green. Absolutely not. That is not a green light. That's 65 milligrams per deciliter and 3.6 in millimoles with the fasted numbers. That's not good. Now, if we start going up, you've got 4.1, which puts you at a 69, still too low. 3.8 millimoles, still too low. Low. HbA1c at 42, 4.2 rather. 72, getting better, still hypoglycemia. So unfortunately, if you're under 75, not every person, but most of you are experiencing hypoglycemia on carnivore and on keto. And that's a 4.0 with your millimoles. Like if you get up in the morning and test your blood sugar and you see a 4.0, let's keep going up. Now we're hitting 4.3 for your HbA1c, 76. Now this is only if you're ketotic, but we'll go more into it. 76 for your milligrams per deciliter. American system and millimoles, it would be 4.2. Great. So basically from a 4.3 to about a 4.5, that's an HbA1c, from a 75 to about an 83 in milligrams per deciliter. I hope this is not confusing for you guys. And then we have, we have a 4.2 all the way up to 4.6, so 4.2 to 4.6 in millimoles. All of that's fantastic, right? To be in ketosis, you want to see blood sugar numbers between, and we'll do milligrams per deciliter. I'm not talking about your HbA1c, but if you see blood sugar between a 75 and an 83, 75, rather 4.3, 4.2, to an 83, which is a 4.6, you're good, you're golden. It's good to go. That's the sweet spot range. When your blood sugar is too low, down at this range over here, you're hypoglycemic. And if you're higher than a 75 to an 83 or 4.0 to a 4.6, why would your body use ketones? It's just going to use the blood sugar. Okay. Now, let's let's uh, mute my phone because that is not okay.
Okay. If you guys are measuring your A1C, which I recommend everybody testing their A1C, if you go get blood work, that's one of the top tests I recommend. You want to see your A1C under a 4.6. Really, if you're eating no carbs, 4.6. Really, any anything under a five, but that's that's getting too high because here we got a five point zero, which is a hundred milligrams per deciliter, and a five point six in millimol, way too high. We really want to see your HB, A one C, between a four point three, and a four point six. If you're at a four point seven, I'm not going to hate. Okay, please be under a five. The problem with your HbA1c, you see it says HbA1c, is that your doctor will tell you that being at a 5.6, which is 5.6, that's 122 milligrams per deciliter. Look at that number right there in the middle. And a 6.8 in millimoles. That is prediabetes. And the doctors will tell you it's okay. That's not okay. 5.5 is not okay. 5.4 is not okay. And a 5.3 is not okay. 5.2 is not okay. It's got to be under a 5.0, which puts you at a 101 milligrams per deciliter and 5.6. Yeah, go get your A1C tested. It should be under a 5.0 to make things simple. Under a 5, period. And that, if you're over a 5, you should be in a, in a, a red zone okay this colored chart is wrong in fact i'm going to make my own colored chart that is more to the way people's health actually works see because typically in these these charts with blood tests when you're sick they say you're at the lower end of healthy it's garbage and the reason why it's garbage is because by the time you figure out that you're actually ill, then they say that you're at the beginning of being unhealthy and it's too late. So they keep having you destroy your body thinking that you're fine with a blood sugar over a five and you're still eating the foods that spike your blood sugar because you're like, hey, the doctor said that I need to be under a 5.6 to be healthy, which is 122 milligrams per deciliter. That's some scary ass stuff. It's frightening. All right, carnivore diets. If you're doing a carnivore diet, please be ketotic. You wanna see your blood sugar again between A, and we're gonna do milligrams per deciliter, so let's get rid of the A1C. You wanna see your blood sugar between a 75, here it says 76, but 75 and an 83. In millimoles, that is a 4.2 to a 4.6. We're good to go. We're done. That's a healthy person. If you are lower, you're hypoglycemic. And if you're higher, you're hyperglycemic, period. Now, click down on this for a second. For those doing a carnivore diet, a lot of you are experiencing high blood sugar or low blood sugar because you can't stabilize your blood sugar on protein, unfortunately. That is why we try to drive ketosis, because when you drop out your carbs, your body's looking to restore either glycogen within the muscle, or you wanna use ketones, because protein is gonna get you into a thyroid, adrenal, low sex hormone, inflammation mess. Check up your thyroid. Your body needs gasoline to drive that car and it's not gonna get it from protein. It's not. You're gonna get a little energy from protein, you're gonna tank. That's why so many bodybuilders drink caffeine. I know, cause I used to live in Hollywood, California, where people were slamming pre-workouts and eating high protein. They were a hot mess. Their skin was a hot mess, they were bloated, blood sugar, they were crashing in the afternoon, crashing post-workout. So when you hear gurus 
say, oh no, you just eat meat. And hey, you don't need to restore glycogen storage just within the muscle. You have liver glycogen. Well, guess what? Having liver glycogen is going to burn you out in 10 to 20 minutes of working out. See, because I've been working out since I was 30 in a gym. Before that, I was a pro skater. There are so many people that gas out if they're not in ketosis or they don't have enough glycogen storage. So be careful on what you hear. People become, I've said before, very culty, very zealot about carnivore. And I know this because the exact thing happened with ketogenic diet. There was no difference. I was on the Dr. Oz show promoting ketogenic diets, magazines, books, millions of gurus, keto con. Keto was everywhere. Where is it now? Okay. Where is keto now? Nobody even talks about it anymore. They talk about the carnivore diet. So first, really when I started being aware of any dietary measure or lifestyle, it was the HCG diet. And everybody did. I would do consultations and people would be on their third rotation, not losing their weight. That's why no one's talking about it anymore. It was the miracle diet. Then there was keto and that exploded and it went up and it crashed and burned because people lost weight, but they didn't understand. Are they losing fat weight? Are they losing muscle weight? Are they losing water weight? Well, gurus then didn't talk about those things, but I did. Yeah, because I would coach people with chronic, chronic dehydration, headaches, constipation, loose stool, uh, dark circles under the eyes, bloated, um, heartburn, eating fat, histamine, stuff no one was talking about. I used to always say, do not eat nuts, do not drink caffeine, and do not eat cheese. And the internet went cuckoo. They thought I was absolutely a nutbag. In fact, they put up one of my videos on Reddit and people just slammed me. Now, no one slams me for those things anymore. What they slam me for is my position on doing carnivore diets long term. Why would I be pushing so against long term carnivore if I didn't nonstop see the problems? No one's asking me that question. They're just saying, like, you're wrong. I've been doing it this long and I'm amazing, but you never see them. I'm like, come work out with me. Let me see what you look like. Because humans are very, can be very subjective. Because you, it's the same thing with veganism. People are like, oh, I did veganism for five years. I felt amazing until I didn't feel amazing. Had a consultation today with a guy from Australia. And we were talking, he was like, I didn't like you in the beginning. I was like, how so? He said, well, because you would like bag on carnivore and two years of carnivore, I felt amazing. So I was like, she's so wrong. But then shite hit the fan and now we're on our second consultation. His histamine exploded. He's having rashes on meat. The food limitation started just rising. He's like, I don't understand. I'm like, you don't produce enough diamine oxidase. Humans today are so obsessed with what they think is right. They don't like the conversation to test potentially if what they're experiencing is not full stop healthy because you healed from a couple things does not mean that you're healing from everything. I have been in so many situations. The whole fasting thing came after Keto actually it was fasting, 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 one meal a day, dry fasting, the snake diet. Now, now almost no one is talking about that in the consultations that I provide, like they did three, four, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Now it's like dying out. Now carnivore is the rage, and everything goes cyclically in cycles, in trends with diets, because people become obsessed with what they think is right. But I speak for the people, not just one person, many people. In fact, I've worked, worked with thousands of people over the years, and I'm learning from the reactions that people are having off of every trend. And it's not looking good. Someone said in my comment section, oh, she only promotes keto. Absolutely not. I would be in severe trouble if that were true because 
So many people have hypoglycemia, thyroid issues, and of course, number one, gallbladder issues. That's why I started coaching all three diets. And I do coach carnivore because it has its place. But if you eat too much protein, it's like eating a candy bar. Not for everyone, but for the metabolically deranged. There are people who are not flexible with their metabolism. And you know what? That's most of you. For people to be super healthy and like low toxicity, low phthalates, low heavy metals, um, you know, their estrogen, progesterone, testosterone is perfectly balanced. Their sleep is amazing. They don't have Wi-Fi around them. They uh, are just perfect specimens, which does not exist in today's time. So you got to be careful. If you're doing a carnivore diet, you want to drive ketosis. You just do. You want to drive ketosis. And the reason why you want to drive ketosis is because you want to sustain your energy and you don't want to go through this process called gluconeogenesis or glycation of the cells. This is damage to the protein lining of the cells. It pretty much ages you. That's why they call it AGE, ages, advanced glycation end product. It's, it's a thing. I mean, balancing the body is like, do you sleep enough? Are you connected to the soil? Are you breathing the right way? Do you exercise? Do you sleep throughout the night? Do you sleep deep enough through the night? Do you turn off your phone? Do you watch TV? Uh, how do you walk? What's your posture like? Can you poop every day? Do you clear out the bowels? Do you drink coffee? Is your energy stable? Uh, do you have skin issues? Do you have hormone issues? Do you have thyroid issues? Do you have reproduction issues? Men, your testosterone is low because so many men are exposed to xenoestrogens. And these guys waving the carnivore flag in my comment section, like, dude, I'm glad that you feel that it's working for you, but you're cherry picking what, like people feel like they need to be attached to something. See, I'm not attached to keto. I do it because it helped heal my mom from a glioblastoma. And I did it with her. And I want to be the N equals one experiment because over the years, people have said, you as a woman have to eat carbs at some point or else it'll jack up your hormones or your thyroid. Well, we're going, we're touching that 17th year on no carbs, no sugar, no sweet fruit. And the walls that I've hit are hard, like dehydration, potassium, sodium imbalance, not enough magnesium. Those are the worst. The, the gallbladder, I never had, pro had a problem with the gallbladder. I never really had a problem with eating too much protein, maybe perhaps in the beginning. It is the darn electrolytes for me personally. I've never had a problem with eating ungodly amounts of fat, like just oodles and kabloodles of fat. So luckily I haven't had the energy up, down, up, down problem that a lot of people have. Another problem that I have is when you are, I'm 56 and you go through menopause and you have to be careful for your hydration. I gotta be on it. I have to have water with me nonstop. You're always gonna see a flask of water around me. That is the biggest problem that I experience on a carnivore diet. And so I don't play because if I'm not hydrated, then things happen like constipation happens, heart palpitations happen. Uh, you can start to pee too much if I have too much salt, not enough, not enough potassium or too much potassium. Not drinking enough water, drinking too much water can dilute the sodium in my blood. So I'm constantly watching my electrolytes. And when I did a carnivore diet, it was an absolute mess. Yes. My body was already on a keto diet for years. So the low blood pressure symptoms, which is another thing, the heart palps, the regulating your electrolytes, which are directly connected to your hormones, start to tank. And that's the reason why I started to develop melasma on my skin. And I was like, whoa, I need to stop doing this diet because I'd already been no carbs for so many years. So somebody who's a newbie, I didn't notice anything for five years on keto. Nothing. 
So when I developed melasma, I was completely perclumped. I didn't understand why. Now I understand why. My hormones were wacky because my minerals were wacky because I wasn't on top of hydrating the cells. And it's not just about drinking water. It's also about balancing your minerals. And that's really hard to do if you're busy and not paying attention. Yeah. You really want stable blood sugar. But to get into ketosis, you have to hit a sweet spot range with your blood sugar and a sweet spot range for your ketones, which are 1.8 to 3.0. And if they're not in that range, you're not in ketosis. But the other thing is you can make ketones and not use them. If your gallbladder's not functioning properly, if your liver's, if you got high ALT or AST and your liver enzymes are a little wonky, you're not going to produce ketones. A lot of you guys are malabsorptive. You can't absorb your B complex. You can't absorb some of the fat soluble vitamins that you need to heal the cells, or you're not getting enough organ meats with zinc and copper. And people are like, you don't need, you don't need organ meats. I'm like, what's wrong with you, boo boo? Like, the organs of an animal are life to all species. The mineral and vitamin content is un peril compared to a leg or rib meat. Like you can't compare. So be careful. Do your own homework. You don't have to trust me or anyone else because y'all should test and check yourself. Get a glucometer, test when you wake up in the morning on an empty stomach. I'm actually going to do an edit right here. Yeah. So we can divide this up because I'm going to go and cut this afterwards. That's why I put up this. You can test when you wake up on an empty stomach. That's an objective test because you've been sleeping. You haven't done anything all night long. Yeah. If you're waking up in the middle of the night, people are like, it's a dawn's phenomenon. I'm like, yeah, you're dumping glucose from the liver, but in a bad way. Your cortisol rhythm should be on point. And we live in the modern time and humans are incredibly under a lot of physical toxicity and stress and poor sleep. Test when you wake up, if it's running high or too low, because you could, you can develop dysglycemia where the blood sugar is high and low. Not good at all. Ketones are like, oh, I'm in ketosis. I have a 1.2. No, you're not in ketosis. You make, excuse me, you make ketones, but you're not using them. You pee them out. If you use a urine strip, you'll see it's purple that you pee out the ketones. You want to use all the ketones and have it be clear. But if you also are not making enough ketones, it will be clear. So there's a lot of experimentation, a lot of things to learn. And that's why I do all these videos. But stop eating so much meat. If you are insulin sensitive, you don't need all that meat to build muscle. What you need is hormone regulation, insulin regulation. Check your A1C. If you have a chance to check your insulin, check your insulin. That's an amazing, and it has to be A1C insulin and fasted blood sugar numbers to really get an objective snapshot of your blood sugar. Women should be under 70 grams some rare cases it's over if you're super tall or like a volleyball player, a lifter, a power lifter, something like that. Most people don't need over 75 grams of protein to build muscle. You need to balance your hormones, your estrogen, testosterone, progesterone. And that's what no one's talking about. Balance your darn hormones. Make sure you got enough stomach acid to break down the dang protein. You're eating more protein that you can't digest very well. And people start to develop high uric acid levels and overcooking their meats. And it's a big to do. People have histamine. If you have histamine and any type of inflammatory disease and you think that doing carnivore is going to fix you, you are surely, surely mistaken. Check with a glucometer. Check your blood sugar. Let's look at it again. If you look at these numbers, you're going to see a story. You can check 10 minutes before you eat something and two hours later, see if you've got histamine. You can check 15 minutes post-workout, an intense workout to see if your blood sugar drops or spikes or, or, or if it's moderate. You can test your blood sugar just fasted on an empty stomach to see what happened when you slept all night long. You can check your ketones only in the morning because 
if you eat some butter and test your ketones, it's the butter that's presenting on the glucometer for ketones and not body fat, right? There's a lot of reasons why you guys are not losing weight because you're not balancing everything, your cortisol, your sleep, the way you think, your brain is so closely connected to the way the body responds. I hope this helps. These are the numbers. Yeah, if you're doing a proper high fat carnivore diet to heal from histamine or inflammation, you want to see a blood sugar between a 75 and an 83, which would be a 4.2 to a 4.6. Done. Simple. And your ketones need to be between a 1.8 and a 3.0. Not under a 1, not a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, or 7 or 8 or 9. That's not ketosis. And you have to have a functioning gallbladder. And you have, a function, have to have a functioning liver. And you need to know what your liver enzymes, or your, rather your GFR, your kidney filtration rate. Keep watching the vids. I will keep spitting out the details so you don't become confused. And sometimes it's redundant, but sometimes we need that for it to stick. Yeah. Comment below. Tell me if you've ever gotten a glucometer. A uh, continuous glucose monitor is not as efficient as a blood prick glucometer. Urine strips are not very good. Uh, if you get a CGM, just check it for the algorithm and not for the exact numbers, which is useful in that regard. Blood prick, Mojo, Precision Extra, or Floor bland, brand, Floor, Flora, Floor, I think is the name. All of these brands have... Um, that you can get to check your blood sugar depending on what country you're in. One more thing. Um, I gotta remember where my camera is. Uh, I'm teaching at a, a retreat. It starts April, I think April 26th. It's for eight days um, to the first week of May. And if you want tickets, then you're going to go to Wired for Healing, Wired in the number four healing.com. And uh, Sean Baker's going to be there, Kelly Hogan's going to be there, and a lot of other uh, functional, holistic people that I don't really know that well. Sorry. But that's going to be in Tennessee in the Smoky Mountains in a cabin. So if you're interested, go there and check out the website. The guy putting it on is like, hey, Steph, will you mention it? Because I forget. I'm like, yeah, I'm speaking at it. I would love to meet my followers, people who watch what I'm doing. It. So go and check out that if you're interested in that retreat. There's two of them. There's, And I'll be at both. Not every day, but I'll be at both retreats. There's one, and then it goes to another group of people in a cabin, in the Smokies, and I'm out. There's going to be like seminars and going to a regenerative, regenerative hello, farm and uh, just a lot of learning, especially if you guys watch me, of course, you're going to learn the most with Steph. And I'm out. I will link the, I'll put the link in the bio. If you guys feel like you're struggling, go to stephanieperson.com and book a consultation. I've been doing this for years and I know what I'm doing at this point. I really do. I've learned so much from you guys. Also, my Instagram is Stephanie Ketogenic. My Facebook fan page, I hate all these names, is Stephanie the Business Person, as in the body business. I have a course where I cover all three diets, which I'm going to do a big low carb, high fat diet for those who can't do keto or carnivore. And yes, contrary to some guru saying that everybody can do carnivore, that is not true. Especially if you have high uric acid levels, gallbladder issues, chronic constipation on carnivore. Yeah, you might, or hypoglycemia, you might have to go and do carbs, low carb for the short term. You can sign up for the course through stephanieperson.com or you guys can wait for my 30-day challenge where I'm going to take everything that I've learned and try to smash it in as best I can. 30 days of content, including stuff you can download and videos, so lessons, videos about everything. I mean, every freaking thing like this, blood sugar, how to measure things, symptomology, um, constipation, skin issues, I've got 
each 30 day subject in a week. So it might be autoimmune, it might be macros and so forth and so on for 30 days. Mm -hmm. And I'm out because now I got to edit this video and I don't have time. I don't, we had a flood here in the South, but they're going to start building my house in a week. Finally. And I got to get all the course stuff done before the end of the week so I can enjoy my house being built and then I'll do the interior design and then after that I'm going to design this interior is going to look completely different and I'm out peace energy at 56 going on 57 and I wouldn't have it any other way